Hello, and welcome to a very short presentation on uh, just describing uh, the world we're using to uh, design and test uh, agents that can learn to solve what's called the ambulance location problem, where to place ambulances when free to try and minimise the time from somebody calling for an ambulance and it arriving on scene. We call it QAMBO here because we're mostly using what are called deep Q learning agents. Okay, so let's crack on and uh, quickly describe the simulation. It's a very simplified um, environment compared to the real world and will increase its complexity over time. But it is a flat world, it is square, so as all the best worlds are, nice and flat and square. There's a hospital or more than one hospital somewhere in it, here it's close to the centre, and ambulances may be sent to any number of um, what we call dispatch points when free, which are the black, black circles throughout the world. Now, instants occur in any number of areas. We can define the, the number of areas um, so that the red circles here in the instant might occur anywhere in those. Here we've got two instant areas, but the pattern of those areas may shift throughout the day. So, for example, we might have this pattern um, before noon and then afternoon it shifts to a slightly different pattern of where, where incidents occur. Um, and we can have any number of patterns throughout the day. So ambulances are assigned when free to dispatch points and at the beginning uh, they might be assigned randomly throughout the world. So here we have three ambulances and they're assigned to dispatch points and they just wait there. Then an incident occurs here in the top left corner and the closest ambulance is called and will go to attend the, the incident. Um, it is then given a reward which is passed back to the agent, um, or the reward actually is given when it, when it arrives at, at the, the hospital, but the reward is dependent on the time it's taken from somebody calling for an ambulance and it arriving um, on scene. So, ambulance arrives on scene, conveys the patient um, to the hospital, gets the reward, and at that point it needs to know where to go to next. It won't automatically go back to the same dispatch point. The agent can tell it to go somewhere else as it starts to learn where's best and patterns throughout the day and such, such like. What the agent is told is how many ambulances are currently assigned, so they might be sitting there or on their way, at each of the dispatch points. It's told the location of the current ambulance so if you've got more than one hospital, the ambulance that needs allocating to a dispatch point could be in uh, the different places depending on which hospital it's at. And it's also told the time of day. And then the agent says, ah, OK, I know that ambulance is currently in this position. Uh, we've got coverage on these dispatch points, but not these others. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm going to send you to a dispatch point, for example closer to where an incident occurred earlier. And the agent's job is to learn where to assign ambulances um, to, to minimise the response times. And then the cycle repeats here. We've got an incident now occurring in another region um, down in the bottom, um, the, the bottom right. Uh, and each time ambulance dispatched, it goes to the uh, patient, takes them to hospital, and at that point asks the agent, OK, where shall I go next? That's the simulation world. OK, so a quick um, look at the uh, where the code is, the structure of the code. Um, only, only very quick. I'm not going to go into details of reinforcement learning. I will put a link in the video of a long YouTube video um, that I did which talks through um, a similar problem which is how to adjust the number of staff beds in a hospital and that uses um, DQ learning as as well and that video throws uh, a lot of the basics of Q learning but it is I think two and a half hours long just as a warning. Um, okay so I've got the paper which we'll link um, to in the uh, video description below there, um, if you go to this tab here in the box code, 
the community code takes you to the um, papers with code um, site and then that links through to the um, github repository which is also um, linked in the paper um, directly so the github repository has jupyter notebooks for well first of all a, a an agent that just acts purely randomly. Each time the uh, ambulance needs a sign, it just picks a point at random and assigns it. And then a range of um, uh, deep learning agents that, that have been implemented so far. Now, you can run this on Binder Hub. If it hasn't been run on Binder Hub for a while, you know, it can take um, a few minutes to actually um, load up for the first time though then it should be fast after that. Um, so if I got one on Binder Hub here, open. So let's have a look quickly at the structure um, of the, the code. So each notebook, each agent is standalone. It, it sort of, well, it calls in the, the simulation, the Ambo World simulation, but each notebook is standalone um, agent and there's a description about Q learning um, and the general principles of the steps that it's going to go through um, right at the, the top um, then taking you through the code structure of what's happening and then the code is below with the numbers linking um, to uh, to this di diagram here so it takes you through and explains um, what it is doing for somebody who's got some familiarity with the deep uh, Q learning agents. Um, and then on Binder Hub, if you've clicked on the launch Binder Hub, you can actually run it here, kernel, restart, and run all cells. Um, and then at the bottom, this should now be uh, running. Um, it's just reset itself. Uh, it won't be the fastest implementation on um, Binder, but here we are, run one and uh, the level of exploration, which is the level of times, the, uh, the proportion of times the agent is making choices purely at random. So we have an original, an initial exploration phase, and then, uh, then it will start learning. And it's giving us our mean assignment to arrival and our mean call to arrival. So we have one of those um, for, for each agent. Um, and then the paper will, summarize um, the results so let's just go back to let's have a look at the PDF for the paper and so I'm just going to scroll down just look at one of the figures so here for example this is let's make this bigger uh, one incident area three ambulances mean call to response time this number one is the randomly acting agent and then we have a series of other learning agents um, uh, so th the names of them are down here for those those familiar we've got two incident areas six ambulances three incident areas nine ambulances and each one is shifting uh, patterns two patterns per per day and so for example we might see agent number nine the, these are tested 30 times the box plot we might see agent number time uh, number nine seems to be consistently good, and that's a bagging, noisy, dueling um, double Q network for those familiar familiar with those. Okay, so that's a very quick um, uh, summary of it. Do do get in touch um, if you you'd like to chat more about it. Thank you.